Hey kids, Jeff Davis here for the Craft Beer Nation, coming at you with another bite-sized review of another tasty beer that you might want to be checking out. Tonight I'm going to be re reviewing 5050 Brewing's Eclipse. This is an imperial stout with honey, and this is their vanilla variant. Okay, these guys, uh, they're up in Truckee, California, which is just up the mountain from where I'm sitting right now, and just get this out there right right now, clear the air. Yes, I am sitting in a Hampton Inn hotel room, and yes, I will be drinking this beer out of a glass that I paid a dollar and eight cents for at the dollar store last night. So, spent all my money on the beer. Didn't have no no money for proper glassware. But, but these guys are um, you know they mostly distribute in uh, Nevada and uh, California. They come out with uh, six to eight beers uh, variants of this beer every year. It's it's brewed from their totality imperial stout. It's uh, they do it in three hundred. 300 gallon uh, little micro batches, um, and then they put this wax on the top to to denote the variance. And uh, tw this is 2015. In 2015, they had uh, a lavender wax, which is coffee, uh, an orange wax, which is cognac. Uh, Elijah Craig, 12 year, is purple. The Grand Cru is a gold. Uh, High West Bourbon is a kind of a tangerineish color. High West Rye was um, kind of a lime green. Vanilla, obviously, is white. And Woodford Reserve is uh, kind of a blue pearl color. So there's no, you know, there's absolutely no designation of what kind it is, you know, on the bottle itself, other than the wax, and you got to have the decoder ring. So I bought, uh, I got six of six of the different variants this year. I have not had any of them, so I'm pretty keen to try this. Uh, this is one that that they say you'd want to drink pretty fresh because the vanilla kind of kind of fades. It's pretty thick ass wax on there, so uh, I did get that off. Oh, man, that's already got a nose that I can I can feel here. So let's let's see what this thing looks like. So you know, for eleven point nine percent beer, you, you know, getting two two and a half fingers, a pretty solid kind of khaki head. Um, the beer is is not pitch black. Uh, you probably can't see, but it's you know very very dark uh, kind of mahogany. Um, there's no light whatsoever coming through it. Uh, you know, and, and pretty decent head retention for for a big beer. And it's it's kind of a it's kind of a stiff head. I mean, you can see the bo the bubbles kind of jiggling around on the top in this big old fancy proper glassware from courtesy of the dollar store. Oh man. So let's see what this nose is going on, and uh, I think even if you didn't have the decoder ring, you would uh, you would be able to uh, figure out what this variant is. It's got a kind of a huge uh, huge vanilla bomb, uh, absurd vanilla aroma to it. You get you get you know you get a, it's not really boozy smelling, but you do get a little bit of kind of bourbon barrel in the back, and sort of. Sort of like a, it reminds me of like either Swiss Miss uh, kind of hot chocolate or or like I keep thinking malted malted milk balls, um, which I used to love as a kid. But yeah, it smells uh, smells delicious. Um, I hope it tastes as good as as good as that as well. So let's see uh, let's see what we're talking about here. And that's yeah, you know, it's pretty decent retention for for a big beer. It's still hanging in there. So let's let's give this a sip. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because the nose is the nose is pure vanilla, but the flavor is uh, almost a little more on the kind of cocoa, cocoa and chocolatey, you know, choc like a chocolate malt, or maybe like a mixed uh, swirly cone, you know, with vanilla and chocolate in there. You get you get chocolate in the front, and then at the back is more of a kind of vanilla and bourbon and and kind of oaky roastiness. And it uh, and it's it drinks pretty easy, um, way more easy than I thought it would be for a, for eleven nine. It's not it's not hot at all. Um, I'm not getting much much booze, and and I, I'd say the barrel notes are pretty pretty subdued. Um, you get you know you're getting some oak and a little bit of roastiness in the back, but it's it's not it doesn't really taste like it's been in kind of fresh wet bourbon barrels. 
but but really delicious. And uh, you know, the mouthfeel, I I personally would say it's kind of medium, a, a little bit medium to light for an imperial stout. It's not you know it's not really big, but it's got a nice velvety smooth mouthfeel, and and it, it coats the coats your mouth nicely, makes you want to you know take another sip. Yeah, I will. I will have no problem finishing uh, finishing uh, a bomber of this uh, in in no time. It's pretty pretty easy drinking beer. Um, so, you know, all in, I'd say um, I'd say appearance. I would give this thing kind of a three three five, something like that. Um, the nose, I would give it maybe like a four or five. It's got a big big nose. Taste four four point two five. Um, Mouthfeel 4.25, so I'm I'm feeling like a solid four four above, probably 4.25. I I would put it in the same. I, I like vanilla stouts. I haven't had a lot of them, but uh, you know, a few that I would put, say this is similar to is uh, like Imperial Biscotti Break, the Bourbon Bourbon Barrel Age Biscotti Break, um, uh, Vanilla Noir from Prairie. Um, if you've ever had like Vanilla Dark Lords, it's it's that kind of beer, big big stout, but with a nice kind of vanilla. Round roundness to it that that makes it very easy to drink. So that's it, guys. Um, it's a great beer. It's worth trading for if you can find it. It's the pricing on it's kind of stupid, but you know it's not something you're going to drink every day. But it's worth trying to find every once in a while. So uh, click the link above this video if you like it to subscribe and listen to all the Craft Beer Nation stuff on Skitcher, iTunes, or wherever you like to your podcast served up. That's it, and cheers. Peace out, kids.